eat all that. That's good. What we got here is uh, about an eight pound hunk of boneless pork butt. I uh, scored the fat. I got a little bit of oil in the uh, the pan in there. Got a nice crispy top on there. Just browning off the sides. Salt, pepper, a little bit of cayenne. You can get pretty crazy with these rubs and you can also uh, brine them. But um, really not necessary. Then we're going to go ahead and slow cook this for about 6 hours at 225. And this is going to fall apart. This one we're actually going to do a little teriyaki version. Uh, the one I did previously, this was actually originally about a 15 pound uh, piece. And uh, I'll show you what we did before. This one we did before, I'll try and get it light there. Uh, I mean, it just shreds, just falls apart. Really, the, the low, slow cooking, even with chicken, you can do barbecue chicken this way. Uh, keep it under 250. Um, anywhere towards 300 really gets too much. The, the, the fibers of the meat really get tough. You want to cook this thing for six hours minimum. Um, and this thing will just buttery fall apart. And uh, the only thing I have is a little liquid. We're using this roast air oven thing. Got a garage sale. Uh, it doesn't have the fan unit on there, so I just have about a half cup apple cider vinegar. <laughs> we're not removing the rust off this thing. It works for cooking too. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we're gonna get this sucker in there. There is a little tray in there. Uh, I took that out. I'd rather have it sit in its juices. If you don't have any sort of slow roaster like this, um, here's a trick I'm gonna give you. Go ahead and put it in some sort of pan uh, that's deep enough to cover the meat right get a little bit of liquid in there and I'll show you some of the other stuff we're gonna put on here but put saran wrap over it and this is gonna go in the oven and I know what you're thinking if it's under 250 it's not gonna melt the saran wrap over the saran wrap that's a nice airtight seal it's gonna keep all that moisture in there kind of like an oven bag then you're gonna take foil and go right over the top now it might get a little crispy a little melted but it's gonna hold all the uh, all the juice and the moisture in and the foil will keep the plastic from burning and do that about 225 is what I do have mine set to and uh, six hours and pull it out and you don't have to do nothing people do all sorts of pulled pork sandwiches and they spend hours pulling it with tongs and forks you know what if you do it right it'll just melt apart a lot of folks you can do apple juice and stuff like that a lot of guys will actually put too much liquid in there when this fat starts to render off there's gonna be enough liquid floating in there it's not going to have a problem. Uh, the rack also brings it too far up. You really want this down below. Um, all I'm going to do to this, put a little uh, tomato paste, smear it on the outside. Got some pineapple chunks. And I normally make my own teriyaki sauce, um, but this has been in the cupboard for a while, so we're going to toss this on. It's a mango pineapple teriyaki glaze. It's very liquid. Uh, the instructions say you got to cornstarch it to make it thick like a teriyaki sauce. So. This here is a simple barbecue sauce. Uh, basically, you use chili, uh, tomato, chili sauce, tomato sauce. Um, I use coffee to dilute it, a little bit of Worcestershire, a little bit of liquid smoke. I uh, use red chili, cayenne, and chili powder. And uh, what else do I got on there? Garlic. You need garlic. You can put a little onion in there and then use coffee to dilute it down. So it works pretty good. All right, pineapple chunks, pineapple juice tomatoes all that stuff is in there gonna set a six hour timer and uh, if it is a little too juicy at the end uh, just pull it off it, a lot of it's gonna be the fat anyway and then as you spread it off it'll soak most of that up and then we'll use the teriyaki all right it's about three and a half hours in careful the steam and uh, what are we gonna do because I'm not cooking this in the oven is uh, you can also see all the fat that's rendered out of here is I'm going to try to flip this over and I might need two hands there we go nope now you're gonna see the stuff that was down here it's gonna start just start pulling off in fact this piece already did fall off of the end and this is what I'm talking about you should be able to just put a little pressure on it and it should just fall apart shouldn't have to sit here with a fork and pull it should just melt alrighty a little after seven and uh, basically the hard part about <laughs> having it fall apart in your mouth is it's hard to get out of here 
Um, I don't necessarily need all the uh, the fat and the juices because I'm going to have that teriyaki sauce get sucked into the drier meat uh, instead of the fat. So I'm going to try and uh, put the camera down, pull this out, and put it into the bowl. All right. Basically, just use a uh, a slotted spatula uh, to get all the caramelized uh, little bits of the tomato paste and the caramelized pineapple. What you can see is beautiful and delicious. All right. Well, cornstarch is handy for a few things. I don't generally like to use it um, unless it's a specific use. A lot of places will use thickeners like cornstarch to thicken up things that. Uh, don't need it. Uh, like if I'm doing a chowder, if I really, if I'm making it for my family, I'm going to reduce things down until the flavors are right and everything gets thicker naturally. Uh, and a lot of restaurants will use, uh, not necessarily cornstarch, but other thickeners um, to thicken it before it gets to that way. And it essentially is a money saver. They can get a, th a thick soup using roux and cornstarch and other thickeners uh, before it's, it's actually ready. So you're losing a lot of that flavor. Where I actually use it, I'll use it in some uh, like berry compotes uh, where I don't want to cook the berries down to mush, uh, but I still want to have a sugary thick sauce on there, uh, coating the berries, say if you're making a breakfast for people. Um, another one is uh, anything with salt, uh, sodium, soy sauces, teri or teriyaki glazes. Um, you reduce those already slightly salty sauces down and they just get immensely salty. All right, now using cornstarch, you don't want to just directly put that in uh, a liquid. Uh, it'll get clumpy, kind of like you know your grandmother's gravy. She'd always complain that there was lumps in the gravy, stuff like that. Um, that's for adding you know flour or anything to a liquid. So what we're going to do, what's called in the restaurant, is we're going to make a slurry. Um, cornstarch is heat activated, so you got to use cold water. Otherwise, it's going to be a giant mess. And we're going to kind of swirl this around. I'm going to actually use a spoon to uh, thoroughly mix that. But this is going to be our slurry, and we're only going to add it um, to as thick as we need. Now, as you can see, this is just merely the, the fats and juices, that tomato paste, um, the pineapple juice is redu reduced. It already has sort of a beautiful color and a coating and a flavor. We're just going to enhance that a little bit because... Basically for lunches, we're just going to be throwing this in a tortilla and putting it in the George Foreman. And uh, I might freeze a little bit as well. But uh, we're going to get the sauce going. Now as I mentioned, cornstarch is basically heat activated. You can add it to a sauce, and if the sauce is cold, it's not going to do anything. And I know the lighting is probably not good in here. Um, but you can see it's just starting to come to a boil. Now I don't want to boil this and I don't want to reduce this. The other thing is make sure to keep a spoon in here because the cornstarch will settle uh, to the bottom so you're not going to get the full effect. And I'm just going to put a little in and I'm going to stir it. And I'm going to give it a sec. And I honestly don't probably want this as thick as I would normally make teriyaki sauce. Um, simply because I'm using it, it's going to get sucked into that meat, so I don't need it super thick. But don't put it all in at once, because you're going to end up with a sauce thicker than you need, then you're going to have to add water, and it's just going to be a mess. So add just a little bit, wait for that heat to come back up. I do apologize for the lighting in here. I didn't realize that knife video was so bad until I watched it later. Got to do something about the lighting in this house. It's just not up to par. Might have to park the scout in here. <laughs> but you got little bubbles coming up, so I'm just going to put a little bit more. Probably won't use the whole thing. And again, I don't really have recipes. I've got an ingredient list kind of in my head. Do everything to taste. So we're going to let this come up, and uh, it should be just thick enough. Basically, you can see it kind of slow down. You'd want it to like coat a spoon. This is a wooden spoon, but you can see we're starting to coat the back of it a little bit. And that's as thick as I need it for this sauce. Alright, fish product. Beautiful little sheen of teriyaki. We're going to give it a little taste test here. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. 
That is tasty. That's going to make a good lunch this week. And uh, this has been Cooking with Beast. Thank you for watching.